Welcome to the Integra Type R track build presented by Valvoline. As you can see from the brake dust on the wheels here, Pete and I just got back from TMP where we completed the Honda build off series with our big track battle and we have not had time to clean this thing up. In fact, we're diving straight into this build series where we are prepping this car to go to Gridlife's Circuit Legend event down at Lime Rock Park in Connecticut. And we are doing that in partnership with Valvoline. They, of course, are a sponsor of Gridlife and they've been asking us for years to come down there to participate in some of the Gridlife's events. But with COVID going on and with us not really having a track car handy, we haven't been able to do that until now. is torqued down after much stress because as you compress that rubber seal it gives you that feeling of a stretching bolt or something that's about to snap but if you use the torque spec in the factory service manual like we just did it it all went in there we didn't break any bolts and this of course is Moroso's road race pan as you saw it is baffled inside and it also increases capacity so this is going to give us the best protection we can against uh, oil starvation which is always a concern with Honda's Back in the day, I starved my bearings with a stock pan at Summit Point in my Type R. So uh, this just makes me feel better about going on a bit of a long road trip and not having a repeat of that scenario. All right, here we have our radiator upgrade from Coil Rad, and this little OE Rad is kind of hilariously skinny. Look at the capacity of that guy compared to this big boy. As you can see, we are definitely adding a bunch of capacity into the cooling system. And we know from past experience that these coil rads are very efficient at cooling as well. So, and you also get the reliability of a full aluminum end tank versus the, these plastic end tanks, which with time and age do tend to be prone to cracking. And if you crack this at the track, you could be, you know, melting things down before you catch it. So this is definitely giving us the reliability and the added cooling capacity that we want for, you know, extended track sessions. Now with that Moroso pan in place, it is time to fill this puppy up with the good stuff, but I'm not gonna tell you what top secret oil we're using on this. As I suit up here though, I will tell you that this top secret motor oil we'll be running is a racing oil with a high zinc formula. Running a high zinc formula in a streetcar like this with a catalytic converter does have its pros and cons because the zinc can harm your cat over a long term period. So perfectly safe to run in the motor for a race weekend and take advantage of the benefits of a high zinc formula, which is really all about protecting your bear bearings, giving them that extra layer of protection. I should also mention that this high zinc formula has anti wear and anti foaming agents and anti foaming is really important at the racetrack because you don't want an aerated oil supply going to your bearings. You might suck air and that would be a bad thing. If you haven't guessed already, that's right everyone, we are gonna use Valvoline's full synthetic VR1 racing oil, high zinc formula. We've used this in a bunch of our cars over the years and it's worked exceptionally well. We are of course going with a 10W30, which is the 30 is the important part and that is the, the factory weight for this motor. All right guys, it's time to fill up that coil rad and of course for that we are going to Xerix by Valvoline and here we've got their full menu of coolants out and as you can see, they offer a coolant for every variety of vehicle on the market. They've got the Asian blue, like your Honda or your Subaru or your Nissan takes. They've got the Asian red for Toyota Lexus Scion, as well as this G48 for European stuff. 
We've got the original formula for domestic or American cars, and they've got the multi-vehicle, which if I wanted to trigger the Honda Purist right now, I would put that in there because if I'm honest, I ran the green multi-vehicle stuff in my Hondas for years, road racing and street driving, and it, it was fine, but blue is the factory color for Honda. So yes, we're putting the blue in. And for that, you can see we're using our airlift system here, which draws all of the air out of the coolant system. As you can see, it compresses the hoses. And we can see on this dial that it's not losing uh, pressure. So we know we've got a well-sealed coolant system. So all we have to do now is reverse the flow, open these things up, and it's gonna draw this pail full of the blue Honda coolant into the motor, and we should be done. We don't have to do the fancy, you know, manual bleed procedure. There you go. You can see it draw that coolant up there. The valve cover is off and that is for two reasons. The first one, we want to make sure the valve adjustment is, or the valve lash adjustment is spot on. And of course, our 0.019 millimeter lash here fits right in. So uh, I did confirm all of them. We are within spec. If you look up here, actually, this is pretty amazing about Honda. The valve lash cold, you can see on this side is 0.17 millimeters and exhaust 0.19. So we are certainly within spec there. For those of you that watched the previous video series, you will know that I used VHT Wrinkle Red on this valve cover and it turned out very poorly. And I promised, I said to Dave, I owe him one. And thanks to the guys over at JHP USA, they had this in stock. Look at this, you can buy a new valve cover. And oh my goodness, it looks so much better. It looks so much cleaner. It is just gonna finish off this engine bay to my spec. So I have to put the, the gasket in here, but I'll just show you, look at that VTEC goodness. And this is the JDM one that has a nice big Honda logo there, which I think is the better one anyways. Continuing the beautification of this car, stuff that we missed in the previous series that you guys were appalled by. Was the caliper not being painted the most common thing in that whole video I think series? So. Pete? People, people were very, very triggered. <laughs> they were straight up losing their minds over it, and uh, really, it just came down to budget in that series. We don't have a budget anymore. And so time and time. That's true too. So to paint these, we were going to use Pour 15's caliper paint, but then when Pete went to pick it up, he noticed it was only rated to 500 Fahrenheit, which on the streets probably fine, but on the racetrack, not going to cut it. However, they do make this high temp stuff that's rated to 1200 Fahrenheit which should be more than adequate. So uh, we're gonna find out the old fashioned way and that's by using it and seeing if it uh, can stand the test of track abuse. So it is in a nice sort of, uh, I don't know what we call well, it. This is like the only color available. I would have preferred black, but it's they call this manifold gray. Manifold piece, gray, yeah. So. I mean, it's close to the color this caliper would have been originally. They would have been kind of a... I think they would have been a little bit shinier. But yeah, they would have yeah. been shinier, but it's it's in the ballpark, so. It's not a bad uh, look and it's certainly better looking than that rust, so. Uh, and people were very, very triggered as well that we left the rear brake rotors on. So I blew the budget and bought a set of new ones just so we don't get any more comments. While we let the caliper paint dry, we're gonna focus our efforts on the shifter. This is the factory shifter. And t truth be told, I don't find it to be a bad shifter per se. But what I do find lacking is the position that it's in. It's always kind of like too low when you're reaching for it. And what we're gonna do is install a K-Tune one. And as you can see, it is fully adjustable. So it's gonna allow us to raise the position and it's just gonna firm things up. So everything here is just much tighter, not OE, you know, rubber softness. So we're gonna get more precision, which is never a bad thing on the racetrack as well. We've dialed in our shifter here to, I think the right height and feel. This thing is like completely adjustable. You can adjust how short the shift is, how long the shift is, height here. And I think right now, this to me is kind of the, the, the perfect length but beauty is we did leave the whole shift boot off here. I kind of like it more for a, a race look and we'll be able to have like easy adjustment on track if we don't like it. So if you guys have been following along with the series, then you will know that this thing had like this crazy alarm system installed on it. And I think I found like a backup battery. It's kind of crazy. This was tucked in on both sides of the center console right here. You can see with like double-sided tape, there's a weird, this is what kind of has me bugged out here is these are almost like antennas. See this here? Yeah. Weird, this is like yeah. an antenna, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So this is like a remote way to trigger it or something. Oh, maybe I, the antenna bunnet button would like disarm it or something. Man, man I, I don't know. But see, like there was certainly something 
crazy going on. Crazy, here. like th this thing had everything you could have so this wasn't stolen, which is, uh, you know, back in the day, a good thing. You but know what, it, it worked, because this car Exactly, we are here, we are here <laughs> working on this vehicle and it made it made it 270,000 kilometers without anybody stealing it. So what well, all this stuff right now is kind of like laughable, but you know, 10, 15 years ago, this was a, a, a certainly a necessity. There it is guys, our Profi SPG. We have used this seat in our Targa FRS, our Ontario 1500 FRS, and uh, we are recycling it in this car. This is one of my favorite bucket seats of all time. And that is just because of, bam, you fit like a glove in it. It's so nice, it is tight on the hips, I will admit that. If you've got a, a larger waist, I'd say probably 34 DP, what are you? I'm a 34, I have about as yeah 34 as you can go yeah yeah like i'm a i'm a 33 and uh i fit very nicely and snug in here uh we did put in these buddy club super low seat rails we love them because they're such a great bolt-in option to get the seat as low like look how low i am now yeah comparatively yeah, before idea. and it's just so so nice you saw us put in these takata these takata uh dot street legal four point race harness so the they drift two harness actually. drift two yeah okay drift two. drift two harness and you can see we do have a little bit of adjustment to do but all those eye bolts bolted in perfectly the trick one that we used over here on the pillar side for the the seatbelt side here was i think from bray Krause. yeah again so. a, a recycled uh, clip out of the stash now, all we have left to do here is replace the steering wheel because this feels like a, a, all of a sudden I'm driving a truck, DP. This thing is massive. It is a bit of a yacht wheel, isn't it? Before I throw on the steering wheel and hub here, I wanted to show you a neat little trick that I found. Obviously, a lot of you guys probably wonder how do you quickly and easily get your horn to work when you're using an aftermarket hub like this. And the best thing to do is actually a OEM Honda product. This is a tab, I think from like a, a 90 or to 93 DA Integra. And this, yeah, as you can see, what I've done is I've just like hooked it up to where the clock spring used to be. And then this is just a wire that runs to the, pl to the horn plug down there. And now you're gonna get a positive connection on the back as soon as you install this hub, just like that. So it's touching there at all times. So it's super easy super quick and you don't have to muck about like trying to figure out how to properly get it to ground and all this stuff so finishing off the steering wheel package here is this Mo, Mo Monte Carlo uh, we also have an ASR three inch spacer here which I think looks really cool both of these pieces you can get from JHP USA which has like a massive amount of steering wheels so if you're in the market for a steering wheel check them out and Man, sitting in here, this does feel like we've transformed the interior DP. This thing is gonna be full race spec, ready to rip here, I'm loving it. We interrupt this program for an
important news announcement. If you're not already a supporter of ours on Patreon, we're gonna try to change that right now by showing you this promotion we're gonna be doing over on our Patreon page, giving away a whole bunch of racing suits. These are all used suits, but they are still in excellent condition. We have this very special one donated by AWA Racing. They are a local race team, and you can see that uh, Kuno Whitmer was actually the driver of this suit, a very famous Canadian racing driver. This is a top of the line OMP suit, and it's not expired, so you could wear this in any kind of racing. You might just wanna cover up his name if you don't want people asking, hey Kuno, why'd you get a face job? We also have a bunch of crew uh, suits from AWA Racing, really nicely embroidered, front and back. These are not expired, but they're getting closer to that age, so you'll might have to get them recertified. And of course, Pete also reached into his world famous stash, pulled out a couple of suits here. He's got this nice Alpine Stars one that we wore in the Ontario 1500. And he's got this other very nice Alpine Stars one that goes back to our modified magazine days. He even pulled out a pair of shoes. Anyway, jump over to patreon.com forward slash speed academy. You'll see all the details there and sign up if you want to add one of these to your collection. All four calipers are done being painted and uh, it's what Pete considers to be the most boring shade of gray. Is that right, Pete? I think so, yes. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a more boring shade of gray. It does kind of look OEM. It, it does. You know, like, it certainly has that cast metal look. It so. does, yeah. I think it's very convincing in that it uh, looks OE and isn't rusty. So that's really the big win for us. By the way, for those of you who are wondering why we didn't spray it, why we brushed it on, to spray it, we would have had to like mask off the whole wheel well because we didn't want to disconnect the caliper from the brake lines because then we'd have to bleed the brakes again. So instead, we just brushed it on carefully. And it worked out well. Worked out well, yeah. works fine. So, and as for brake pads, well, we were running some old HP Pluses on this car for the budget build, but since we're out of budget hell, we went and got ourselves a brand new set of Hawk DT DTC 60s. They work really well on front wheel drive cars, I find. they are. You know, they, they can handle a lot of temperature. I think their ideal operating temperature is like between 700 and 1100 Fahrenheit, but you can run them between, you know, 400 and 1600. So they're very tolerant to heat. They do need some heat though in them before they start to work well. So when they're cold, they will be noisy, they will be dusty. They'll do all the things that race pads do. Remember that uh, budget build we did where we put in a stock replacement tie rod? Well, in a perfect world, we would have done bump steer correction on this since we did Hones roll centers front and rear and to really complete the geometry fix you really want to also address bump steer with one of home developments adjustable tie rod ends so that's exactly what we're doing here because budget be damned everyone and these are not inexpensive they're around 400 bucks and these spacers is what set your bump steer so it's basically shimming the tie rod to the correct height to zero out your your bump so that you're not getting unwanted steering happening when you hit a bump, which is what bump steer is. So this is basically putting your geometry back to where it should be once you lowered your car. We are moving on to protecting the paint on our Type R and for that we've turned to our buddy Cavill from Make It Shine. He's protecting and shining all of our cars around here lately yeah. and you have brought us some PPF. Yeah, so I cracked a joke with you many months ago about putting PPF on the car. Yeah. Finally decided we've to, to do listen. It. So protect the track cars. Yeah. So um, we we have great success using uh, Aztec Dino Shield in our shop. This is your preferred PPF. This is the, the is. good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a very hydrophobic top coat. It's very glossy, very easy to clean. be thinking oh the type r front lips off the car and that's because they got something really aggressive going on there and that was our plan we did order a front lip and splitter combo from pci or special projects who make or used to make a really nice front lip that sort of got like a flat bottom on it so that you can put a flat plane splitter in it sells it as a kit with mounts and everything it just seemed like it'd be a nice easy turn key way to do it and i like the look of it however <laughs> 
After ordering it three or four months ago, we've had zero communication from him. I've called him, I've emailed him, I've texted him, I've messaged him on all social media platforms. So that's my little rant. Sometimes these things happen, but it's a bummer because visually and aerodynamically, it would have been really nice to have a splitter on the front to balance that wing out. Just like that, the PPF is done. Front end is completely wrapped and that is gonna offer the car a lot of protection at the racetrack, isn't it? Racetrack, everyday driving, highway, whatever you wanna do if you decide to be a I wanna do it all, again. man, I wanna do it all. You should, the, 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 the car looks fresh, it looks good, it's ready and to I'm, be And I'm driven. really impressed by the clarity and the smoothness of it. Like you would yeah. never know that it's wrapped. It's quite remarkable. Yeah. In fact, it seems to add some depth to the shine, doesn't it? It does, it does. Visually, when you stand back, the goal is that you can't tell that there's film on it. Yeah. Um, so I was able to get able to get that done, which is really nice. It looks and amazing, man. It, it, it came out nice. I yes, yeah. well, thank you very much, Make It Shine. Thank you, thank you. And thank you, you S-Tech, for the product. We really appreciate it. Yep. It seems to be really premium stuff. Quick splitter and uh, front lip update. It's a few days later, and I just heard from Jeff at Special Projects, and the good news is they still produce this front lip and splitter. There was some confusion on shipping addresses, but they're shipping one out to us in the next couple of days. The bad news is not going to not going to arrive in time to be featured in this video series, but at least we'll get one eventually. Well, we went down the rabbit hole a little bit on this whole rear hatch thing, and that's because we wanted to put a functional rear wing. I shouldn't say the Type R wing isn't non-functional. It is a functional spoiler, but we wanted a more aggressive wing on it. So we went and got another hatch so that we didn't have to mess up the pristine OE hatch. This is off a non-Type R. But we figured, since we gotta take the glass out to paint it to match the rest of the car, why not take out the heavy glass and put in a lightweight Lexan polycarbonate window? So I jumped online, did a little bit of research, and we found a company out of the UK called Plastics for Performance, and they make these really nicely uh, preformed polycarbonate Lexan windows that are cut beautifully. They're like CNC cut. They're preformed so that they yeah, just that fit in the hole. Look at that, DP. Like, that it, thing fit up so nice. Fit up very nicely. Here's the rear quarter that they also sent us, and you can see it's got like the correct curvature in it. It's got this black surround painted on it already with like the little, you know. Uh, dimpling effect, so it has a very OE look. The blue, by the way, is just a protective coating on it, so once you peel that off, it'll be clear. But you can get them tinted in either a bronze or a gray tint if you want that look. And you can get it in different thicknesses, so depending on how much weight you're trying to save versus how much stiffness you want. And they also make uh, door windows. So they were very kind and sent us the complete kit when really we just wanted to do the rear hatch, but we're not gonna say no to uh, upgrades. However, these are not gonna go on this car. These are gonna to have to go on the other DC2 that we're gonna be building soon. That's gonna be a full on time attack car with like a turbo K20 in it, right PT? 75 JDM points unlocked with this Jay's Racing Wing specific to the DC2 chassis, which we sourced on Yahoo Japan through our friend Steve who runs a YouTube channel called Brickhouse SPL. And he does this side of his business through a website called Nerd Gold. Dot JP. This was a used one, obviously, since we bought it on Yahoo Auctions, and it saved us around $1,000 over a new one, Pete, is that about right? I think so, yeah. And we looked for used ones locally, but this was still way cheaper with shipping from Japan than anything we could find secondhand here in Canada or the United States, so uh, big win. I love this wing. I think it's just proportionately really nice on this car. And as you can see, we peeled the blue protective coating off there, and man, I'm very impressed by the clarity of the optics of this Plastic for Performance 
Lexan window. It is really, really nice, guys. And as you can see, we fit the OE seal around it. All the plastics are on on the inside. So it looks like OE glass in there. It's just half the weight. So pretty pumped on that. And we are now at C17 Media here in Thornhill, which is part of Toronto, basically. And we are here for a very special reason. And that is because with this Gridlife Circuit Legends event really being a celebration of motorsports from the mid 80s to the mid 2000s, we thought it'd be fun to put a livery on this car. And obviously we've partnered with Valvoline on this build. So why not go into Valvoline's vault of like 90s era liveries for some inspiration? So I reached out to our buddy Patrick at Valvoline. He sent me about a bunch of images from their archives. And we used some of those to send to Norm here at C17 to kind of, uh, you know, get the brain firing and come up with an idea for a livery that we think is going to look really cool for this event. Bam, and there you have it everyone. This thing went from stock looking Type R to race car in a big hurry thanks to this livery by C17 Media. And man, I love it. I think it looks so cool. This blue and red and navy blue Valvoline color scheme really pops on the championship white. And I, I love this uh, confetti style Valvoline V down the side. It's a, it's a, as I mentioned before, it's borrowed from their 964 Porsche rally car livery. And I just think it looks super rad on this car. So. I am stoked on how cool this looks and it's only gonna look cooler once we put that Gridlife windshield banner on it and the door card. We do have one last thing we wanna do before we head to Gridlife and that is dry ice blast this car because in the comments section, you guys were constantly honest about, this car is such a great candidate for dry ice blasting and we have figured out a solution for that. So check it out.
right, everybody. This is Ted from Honey Seal, and this is my Integra, which I barely recognize under here because wow, it looks incredible. I'm blown away by how clean this whole area was. This was all black before. If these had surface rust on them, that would be removed by the dry icing blast. There would be mild dry or uh, mild rusting removed, mild corrosion. The thing is, we can't remove the evidence that corrosion took place. Like right here, you can see that the paint is actually like sure. the integrity, yes, stuff like that. Yeah, and it will remove a little bit of that uh, kind of like almost past tea staining. Yeah, but dry ice doesn't provide white metal. Right. It's just uh, there are some grades, but it's inc it's an incredible amount of air that you don't even want to be in the same city as. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it does produce some dirt because it's removing it. And it has to go somewhere, which means it goes to the floor. But I mean, just look at the condition of the chassis. It's pretty remarkable for a car that's 25 years old now, 24 years old now, that it doesn't really have any rust issues to deal with. I, I'm I'm just blown away how clean this car is, and this really confirms to us that. This was a car worth saving because it doesn't have any signs of like rot on the frame rails or the floorboards or anything like that. And no, you're really fortunate, Dave. You, like I said before, I call us archaeologists. There's yeah. no way of really knowing like what we're going to find. Yeah. We just start digging. We dig where you point, mm -hmm. and this is the car. This is where you told us to dig. Yeah. So this is where we started to to do our thing. So it's removing the dirt without harming anything underneath, which is pretty remarkable to me. Again, it comes down to operator proficiency, and Jake's great at what he does. Yeah. And now we have a car that is unprotected in a sense, right? Like we've exposed yeah. some metals and you have a solution to that though, don't you? And here we go. It has been coated with this, dare I say, honey colored material. What am I looking at here? Well, you're close. It's been honey sealed. Dave. Honey sealed. Yeah. Oh. So we've sealed it with that, uh, with that honey look. So it's a paraffin wax. So Ted, how long do you expect this will last? It's not something I'm gonna have to come in and do every year? No, it's not. We, I have taken it off of 40 year old Volkswagens, uh, a lot of German OEMs have actually applied a paraffin wax at the point of manufacture. So we've taken it off of cars as old as very, very late 50s Porsches. Oh, wow. Uh, late 60s okay. uh, Mercedes Benzes. Yeah. So this is a product that, uh, that about 10 manufacturers that have come across, and that's various cars that I've taken it off of that I've seen that it has been applied right at the point of manufacture, right at the uh, time that the to car was made. preserve it for shipping or something along yeah, just, it, to, just it, to preserve it for, so it doesn't rust, basically. Exactly. So what does this cost? I know roughly what it costs to go to the local oil spray guy and have that done, but I, I assume this is more expensive since it is longer lasting and it does involve a dry ice blasting step. It does. It takes longer than 45 minutes to do. It, yeah. takes us, it takes us a while just to even set the car up and protect right. it from the service itself because everything we've taken off has to go somewhere so we protect the car we put a bunch of stuff on it right and what you're typically you can expect is a car like this about this age right around that one thousand dollar mark okay so anywhere between starting right around nine hundred dollars yep. going up to about fifteen hundred dollars very reasonable it does depend on how much access we need to get to and everything like that and what you'll see here actually is something i want to show you guys yeah there's a little bit of animation and activity on this yeah and it still has a little bit of movement to it yeah and that trait is actually something you want when we're applying it to areas that we can't perfectly see we're going to go into orifices like up into the rockers in mm -hmm. here pull and spray from there and you want something that's actually going to go down to coat it and fully. coat right but you don't want it to keep doing that for the entire life of the product because right. then it leaves the area that it's leaving from and winding down on your driveway too yeah. there and yeah. it's actually it's leaving other areas unexposed so when right. this flashes off this will tack up and these will actually be relatively durable. It's a resilient wax. And where it's not as thick, you can feel it is tacking up already. So it tacks up pretty quickly, doesn't it? It does. Once it flashes off, it's ready to, it'd be ready to drive on the next day. It's a product that you can actually work through and there won't be that much transference right to your gloves and to okay. your tools and to your hands. Well, don't serve the wax everybody and it will last you five or six years by the sounds of it and then a touch up from there. Absolutely. It's going to last well beyond that. It's going to be on the majority of the car for 
like we've said, yeah, at least 30, 40, 40 50, 50 years. years. Yeah. yeah, might be on the car longer than your. Should put some in my beard and see how long it lasts. Oh, oh DP, this car might age you out then. Uh, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I've already got this car beat by uh, a few uh, dozen years, and yeah, it's going to last longer than me for sure. You guys have very generously offered to extend a discount on this service to our viewers and all you have to do is use the magic word speed academy at this location or which is in oakville ontario or right. at your location in edmonton that's right so it's under it's there under the company named sublime surfacing in edmonton that's right and here in oakville we're called honey seal, honey seal. so drop our name guys if you want to have your car or even random parts dry ice blasted and of course if you bring your car in you're also wanting you want to get it sealed as well to, to preserve all that cleanliness under there so uh, Thanks again, guys. This is awesome. I am super pumped, and I'm going to enjoy the, uh, the slightly like waxy smell for the next few days. And then after that, the smell's all gone. I'll just smell myself from there, I guess. Yeah? It'll just be peace of mind after that. You'll even forget it, sir. All I'll smell is peace of mind. I love it. And bam! Just like that, we are here at Grid Life at Lime Rock Park in beautiful Connecticut. What a drive. And uh, before we wrap this episode, because yes, you're not going to see us ripping this episode. You got to stick around to the next one. We don't want to give you an update on two things here. One is this honey seal that we just had sprayed on is dry now and it is just a day later completely dry to the touch it has like a slightly waxy feel to it but no dripping and really no smell from it i mean maybe it like smells a bit like crayons because we haven't like been ripping crayons. the tech yet dp it's true once we put some heat in it i'm sure we'll get a bit of a smell and the other thing we wanted to update you on is our max tie down system here we showed this to you a while ago but this is our first time actually using the over the wheel strap system and as you can see it is super tidy however we did have one small problem we had the ratchet strap so close that we couldn't release it properly so we had to move the car further forward on the trailer to give us the length back here that we needed that gave the truck a bit more tongue weight than we want however in a future episode we do have a solution for that from mac tie down so they do have the right setup for us we just ordered the wrong one but we'll show you that fix so uh, thanks guys for watching. We are super pumped to be here at beautiful Lime Rock and we can't wait to show you the next video where we rip some proper tech in our Type R with all our buddies here from Valvoline and from Grid Life.